Hello, this is Max. In the future, on a spaceship, a man wakes up from a cryo chamber and falls in love with a woman. He wakes her up to spend their lives together, but they encounter serious difficulties. You can subscribe to the channel after watching. It helps us a lot in realizing the content. The film commences with a spaceship named the Avalon, a vessel designed to transport 5,000 colonists and 258 crew members in hibernation pods from Earth to the planet Homestead 2. The journey spans 120 years, during which the spaceship's interiors are shown vacant while it operates on autopilot. However, after only 30 years of travel, the ship encounters an asteroid belt that damages its shields. Despite diverting power to reinforce the primary shield, the ship collides with a massive asteroid, resulting in multiple malfunctions. The ship initiates self-repairs, and during this time, one of the hibernation pods becomes active. Jim Preston, a mechanical engineer and passenger, emerges from the hibernation pod. An animated system informs him that he has spent 120 years in suspended animation and that the ship is just two months away from reaching Homestead 2. He's advised to enjoy the ship's amenities for the remaining four months and is given instructions about his ID band, cabin, and planned activities. Excited and anxious, Jim prepares to disembark on the approaching planet. Eager to meet fellow passengers, he attends an automated class but grows frustrated by the lack of interaction with the hologram lecturer. Jim begins to suspect that he's the only one awake on the ship and questions why. Unable to get satisfactory answers, he explores the ship further in search of other people. Jim's attempts to reach real individuals prove futile, as he discovers the entire crew and passengers remain in hibernation. He endeavors to contact the captain and explores the bridge, only to find he lacks the required access. Despite this, he manages to glimpse the sleeping crew members. Jim then heads to the observatory, where he learns the ship is still 90 years away from its destination. He realizes he has awakened prematurely and returns to the main concourse to send a message back to Earth, seeking guidance on how to return to hibernation. Expressing his lack of knowledge about re-entering hibernation, Jim is informed by the system that it will take 55 years to receive a response from Earth. Growing increasingly frustrated and lost, Jim seeks solace at the ship's bar. He encounters the bartender, initially relieved to see another person, only to discover that the bartender is an android. Jim's attempts to communicate and gain answers prove futile due to the Enride's limitations. The next day, he realizes that many amenities are reserved for passengers in the Gold Class. Despite his disappointment, he decides to work on reactivating his hibernation pod. His efforts to manipulate the pod with tools prove unsuccessful. Jim's next attempt involves trying to wake the crew members from their hibernation, but his endeavors yield no results. In a conversation with the android bartender, Arthur, he receives advice to break into the gold classroom for some entertainment. Following the advice, Jim explores the gold classroom, yet the experience leaves him unfulfilled and disillusioned. One night, while under the influence of alcohol, Jim stumbles into the room with the hibernation pods. He discovers a spacesuit and, driven by a mix of curiosity and despair, he ventures out into the vacuum of space. The beauty of the cosmos briefly captivates him, but he's soon overcome by a profound sense of loneliness and despair. He returns inside to perform an unthinkable act by opening the airlock, but ultimately decides against it. In a moment of change, Jim notices a woman named Aurora in one of the hibernation pods. Intrigued by her passenger interview, he becomes infatuated with her and begins obsessively watching her videos and researching her life. He confides in the android bartender about his feelings. Jim is devastated by the realization that he awoke prematurely and that his connection with Aurora is now impossible to achieve, as she's in hibernation and he cannot interact with her. Jim contemplates the idea of waking Aurora up and discusses it with the android. He realizes that waking her up means sharing his isolated existence with her. After internal deliberation, he decides to go ahead with the plan. Jim manages to activate Aurora's hibernation pod and hides as she wakes up, mirroring his own experience from a year prior. When he finally approaches her, she's full of questions and confusion. Jim explains their situation, revealing that they are the only ones awake on the ship. He takes her to the observatory and recounts his solitary year, which overwhelms Aurora. Frightened by the truth, Aurora initially attempts to return to her pod. Jim explains the impossibility of returning to hibernation, leaving them both stranded. Feeling empathy for Jim's lonely year, 
Aurora argues with the automated information desk about hibernation processes. They have breakfast together, and Aurora realizes Jim's limited food options, prompting her to secure a better menu for him. As they interact, Jim discovers Aurora's determination to fix the hibernation pods. She embarks on research and investigation, growing increasingly frustrated with her lack of progress. She even attempts to break into the crew quarters in her pursuit of solutions. Jim notices an increase in ship malfunctions, while Aurora establishes a routine involving writing, jogging, swimming, and interviews. She conducts an interview with Jim, asking about his reasons for choosing the colony. He expresses his desire for significance and the belief that he can contribute to something meaningful. On their way to the observatory, Aurora shares her own motivations. She possesses a round-trip ticket to Homestead too. Her plan is to spend a year on the planet, return, and write an extraordinary story about her unique experience as the only journalist to have lived it. Aurora resigns herself to the reality that fixing the hibernation pod is unlikely. However, Jim takes it upon himself to lift her spirits. He engages her in activities such as dancing and playing basketball, aiming to distract her from their predicament. He introduces her to Arthur, the bartender and droid, and their interactions create moments of warmth and connection. Aurora appreciates these gestures, albeit with a lingering awareness of her isolated circumstances that occasionally dampens her mood. Jim's guilt for waking Aurora begins to weigh heavily on him, especially as their relationship deepens. In an attempt to make amends, he constructs a miniature model of the Chrysler building and surprises her with it. Aurora enters the room while he's working on the project, and her appreciation for the thoughtful gift is palpable. Despite their situation, they manage to find moments of happiness and companionship. One evening, Jim takes Aurora on a date to the ship's bar. They engage in conversation, sharing stories about their lives. Aurora opens up about her father's passing during her teenage years. After dinner, Jim invites her to the airlock, hoping to share the spacewalk experience he had previously. Both don spacesuits and venture out into the expanse of space together. Jim relishes the spacewalk, as this time he has a companion with whom to share the awe-inspiring spectacle. The experience brings them closer and provides a fleeting sense of unity in their otherwise isolated existence. Floating together in space brings Jim and Aurora closer, and their relationship becomes romantic. They share moments of togetherness, engaging in various activities as a couple, including dining, exercising, and spending nights together. They witness the beauty of a passing red giant from the observatory. Aurora's birthday is celebrated with a special dinner at a ship's restaurant, followed by a visit to the bar. Jim carries an engagement ring with the intention of proposing to Aurora. However, a turning point arrives when the bartender, against Jim's wishes, reveals the truth to Aurora about her awakening. Furious and betrayed, Aurora confronts Jim and leaves, removing her belongings from his cabin. She avoids him and physically attacks him in a fit of rage one night, expressing her anger and frustration at what he did. Despite his attempts to explain his feelings, Aurora remains adamant in her resentment. Meanwhile, the ship experiences more malfunctions, and the main command center goes offline due to an error. Jim and Aurora witness escalating issues throughout the ship's systems, leading them to realize that something is gravely wrong. They encounter Gis Mancuso, a passenger who has managed to wake up due to the malfunctions. He learns about their situation and becomes involved in their efforts to understand and fix the ship's problems. As Gis investigates further, they discover widespread failures that threaten the ship's integrity. These faults are not isolated incidents, but rather a series of cascading issues that could lead to disaster. Despite their efforts to repair the ship, Gis falls critically ill due to his earlier awakening, leaving the group facing even more dire circumstances. The need to salvage the ship and everyone's lives becomes more urgent than ever before. Aurora struggles with insomnia and decides to go for a swim to help her sleep. However, during the swim, a gravity malfunction occurs, causing her to start drowning. Just in the nick of time, the gravity drive resets, saving her from the dire situation. After this incident, Jim, Aurora, and Gis gather on the ship's bridge to collaboratively investigate the ongoing problems plaguing the ship. Gis deduces that a significant system failure occurred two years ago leading to the current cascade of malfunctions. Gis's health continues to deteriorate, and he becomes increasingly unwell. With Aurora and Jim's help, he is taken to the ship's infirmary, 
There, the AutoDoc, the automated medical system, reveals that Gis is suffering from pansystemic necrosis, a condition resulting from multiple failures in his hibernation pod. Unfortunately, Gis is informed that he has only hours left to live. As Gis's condition worsens, the three of them gather in the observatory. In a heartfelt gesture, Gis entrusts his ID bracelet to Jim, asking him to take charge and attempt to fix the ship. Amid the urgency of the situation, the ship's lights switch to red, indicating imminent danger. The ship experiences violent shaking, and Jim and Aurora hurriedly move to escape. However, another gravity drive error occurs, causing them to float helplessly. They manage to reach the engineering lab, where they identify the problem, a critically damaged computer module in the power plant. This malfunction has been causing other systems to divert computing power in an attempt to stabilize it. They replace the module and work together to vent the reactor, but an exterior vent failure threatens their progress. Jim realizes that he needs to manually open the vent door from the outside to cool down the reactor. As he prepares to venture outside his spacesuit, he hands Giss's ID bracelet to Aurora and expresses the possibility that he might not return. Aurora, emotionally distraught, pleads for him to come back, revealing her feelings for him. While Jim is outside near the reactor vent, Aurora monitors the situation and notices the rising temperature in the reactor room. Jim struggles to manually hold the vent door open to facilitate the venting process. Despite Aurora's protests, Jim insists that it's the only way to save everyone on the ship. Aurora eventually initiates the reactor venting process, which leads to a powerful blast that propels Jim into space when his tether breaks. He faces the peril of a damaged spacesuit and dwindling oxygen. Aurora swiftly reacts, dons a spacesuit, rescues Jim from space, and manages to revive him using the autodock. The reactor is repaired, and the ship stabilizes. The crew arranges a funeral for Gis, paying tribute to his sacrifice. As time passes, the ship continues its journey, and Jim learns that the autodock can function as a hibernation pod. With Gis's clearance, he offers to put Aurora back in hibernation for the rest of the voyage. However, Aurora decides against it. Instead, Jim proposes to her, and they choose to spend their lives together. Eighty years later, the ship's crew awakens as scheduled near Homestead 2. In the Grand Concourse, they find a flourishing environment with a massive tree and abundant vegetation. Aurora narrates her story, recounting the beautiful life she and Jim shared on the Avalon. Their love story becomes a testament to the enduring human spirit in the face of isolation and adversity. If you are interested in such films, please proceed to the next video on the screen and also share your thoughts about this film in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe. Goodbye.